Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start talking about operator uh, methods in neural networks, which is this really powerful and growing uh, set of methods. So deep operator networks, or deep O nets, uh, were introduced in this paper uh, by Lulu, Jin, and Carniadakis, um, where they essentially showed that, uh, a, a few things actually, this paper does a lot and I think it's a pretty interesting read so I, I recommend it. But essentially what they did is they introduced this idea that if you have an ordinary differential equation or a partial differential equation that is being forced by some kind of external forcing function, then there is a map from that external forcing function to the solution function of your ODE or PDE. And that mapping between those is an operator. So most of neural networks, the universal approximation theorem is really based on uh, approximating input-output functions. But in this paper, they argue that most ordinary and partial differential equations uh, we're actually concerned with the solution operator that maps input functions to output functions. So I'm going to say that one more time. This is really, really important. A standard kind of deep neural network is a universal function approximator. It will approximate some function of a variable x. But in this paper, in the deep O net paper, they argue that instead of trying to approximate an arbitrary function, on some vector of data, what we want to do in ordinary and partial differential equations is estimate the solution operator, which maps functions to functions. So normal neural networks map you know, data to data through a function. The solution of PDEs and ODEs map functions to functions, and those are operators. So there's this old kind of similar uh, universal approximation theorem for operators that actually says that a certain class of neural networks can also arbitrarily uh, well approximate operators, not just functions. So this paper is kind of a modern riff on that idea that in ODEs and PDEs, we actually want to be approximating the solution operator that takes some forcing function and maps it to a solution function of that, that PDE or ODE. That's the big idea. And we're going to you know, essentially go through how this architecture is designed, why does it have a branch net and a trunk net, what are the input functions and the output locations, like what does this all mean? Um, and we're gonna talk about that here. And this is one of many approaches to modeling solution operators of ODEs and PDEs. There are also um, you know, Fourier neural operators and neural operator methods. Um, but this kind of was the first modern paper um, to do that with, with deep learning in a careful and concerted way for ODEs and PDEs. So this is where I'm gonna start. Okay, so the idea again is that I might have a system of ordinary differential equations that has some input forcing. Maybe it's forced by some uh, you know, control or actuation or external disturbance. So there's some input function. And the solution, the output function of my ODE is going to depend on this input forcing. And so um, you know, I might measure what is the input function at some fixed locations uh, either in time or space and I might want to predict my output function on a grid, a spatial grid or a temporal grid. Okay, And so what the deep O network does is it actually splits this network. So I hope my next slide is the straw man. Uh, let me just go to this one here. This is kind of the naive way of taking this input function information uh, and this output function locations and predicting what the output of your ODE or PDE is given this, this data would be to just use a big fully connected network. So deep O networks does something a little different. It splits and has two different big neural networks. One to encode the input function, the features of the forcing uh, function that's forcing your ODE or PDE. So there's one network called the branch net that um, encodes that, uh, those input features. Uh, 
And there is a separate network called a trunk net that um, is used to encode kind of the solution output uh, functions at these specified output locations. And so um, in this paper, they carefully and methodically show that splitting this network into these two branch net and trunk nets uh, is better than that large feed forward network. Okay, and better in the sense that it generalizes better, um, you know, it's more accurate, it trains better, things like that. Okay, so they carefully go through and show that this custom architecture, splitting the input feature space and the output feature space is a clever idea when representing these solution operators of ODEs and PDEs. So I'm saying this a lot that there's a solution operator. I want to go into a little bit more, more detail of what I mean here. So let's look at the simpler case of trying to um, use deep O nets to solve or analyze an ordinary differential equation, because ODEs are usually simpler to think about than PDEs. So let's say I have some ODE here. Maybe this is describing you know, some mechanical system that I'm trying to control, or some system um, you know, like the suspension of a car or a pendulum, something where the state X uh, changes in time according to some function f that you know is kind of the rules of physics for that system. It could be you know a statement of f equals m a, or or something like that. And this system, these dynamics are affected by an input function u of t. So u of t can be thought of as either some control knob I have control over, or some input forcing um, that affects my system over time. And given a particular input u of t, I would want to know what is my solution x of t, um, you know, my, my solution of x of t for future times t. And so in the kind of language of deep O networks, there is an operator g that takes this forcing function u and it spits out my output function x of t that I actually want to be solving for. So this operator g maps from functions to functions, from forcing functions to solution functions x of t. Okay, uh, And it does it, in this case, using this flow map computation. So this is literally just um, the way that we write down the solution of an ordinary differential equation is in terms of this flow map integral here. Um, importantly, this flow map becomes arbitrarily sensitive and you, know, you get this kind of divergence when the dynamics are chaotic. So this is going to be a huge issue for things like operator, uh, operator methods, deep O nets and Fourier neural operators and things, is that it's going to be very challenging to apply these for systems that have chaotic dynamics because you get very sensitive uh, dependence on initial conditions and forcing. And these solution operators kind of uh, will cause trajectories to diverge if I per perturb this input by a little epsilon, my g might diverge uh, for future times. So these aren't going to work great for chaotic systems, probably. You should try it out. You should code this up and try this on a deterministic system and a chaotic system. Okay? But the idea here is we're trying to learn this operator function g using a neural network from functions to functions, and splitting it into the trunk net and the branch net seems to be an efficient uh, and effective way of doing this. And specifically, what the way you would actually train this, let me go to the next slide where you actually have this, the way you would actually train this is that you would have maybe your you know, high fidelity simulations, you'd actually be running a bunch of simulations for different input functions and different output functions. And, uh, or maybe you'd collect measurements from an experiment. And what you would do is you would characterize this input function, this forcing function at a few fixed sensor locations. So for the case of temporal fun uh, forcing, you would characterize this input function at a few points in time. Those would be the inputs here is your forcing function at some specified points in time. And then there would be some output locations where you want to predict what is my solution at these points in time in the future. So that would be your desired locations for your output here. And your branch net and trunk net are going to learn latent features that encode input features that matter for that ODE 
output features that are likely to be generated by that ODE. And they will be recombined in this kind of output field, uh, which is the actual solution. It's your operator G applied uh, to this input function. And it gives you your solution of that ODE at all of those locations and time that you specified down here. So it's a really like simple idea. It's a simple idea that, you know, once I've trained this, now I can give it a new input function. I can look at what, what would happen if I gave it a different forcing function that I've never trained on. Will this uh, predict the solution of my ODE given that new input function? That's what we mean by generalization. And this deep O paper kind of carefully shows that at least for relatively simple uh, physics, simple ODEs and PDEs, this, um, this architecture generalizes better and trains better. It has better convergence and better error and better generalization than if I had just done the same thing with a large, fully connected network. Because again, you could just have one big network that takes in the exact same data, and it's some big fully connected network that then tries to predict this output field at those desired locations. This is going to be more prone to overfitting, uh, harder to train, less generalizable than uh, splitting it into the branch net and the trunk net. So I think this is kind of a cool idea. And this doesn't just have to be for ODEs. I gave you an example where the input function was forcing in time for an ordinary differential equation. But this also works for partial differential equations. This might be an input function um, over all of the points in space. I might be forcing uh, my, my PDE in space, and I still want to learn this operator that gives, goes from that forcing function to the solution of my PDE uh, in space and time. Okay. Now, this original uh, deep operator network paper um, was tested on some relatively simple ODEs and PDEs. So um, as far as I remember, nothing chaotic. The ODEs and PDEs um, are you know, either linear or weakly nonlinear. So the ODE, I think there was like a pendulum example. Um, the PDE is a reaction diffusion example. Um, where again, it's relatively benign and you don't get this kind of chaotic uh, mixing. We know that the solution operator for chaotic systems is going to be irrepresentably complex. This is actually proven by Poincaré 100 years ago that the solution operators for chaotic systems are irrepresentable. Um, and you know, even universal function approximation runs up against those irrepresentability limits. Okay, um, so this works really well for systems that are not chaotic. Um, and there's some cool examples in this paper. Again, like um, I'm not trying to, to criticize. You always start with simple examples. When we develop algorithms, we also start with simple examples. Um, and, and they're really uh, carefully demonstrating these ideas of generalization, um, using this branch net and trunk net on these, these uh, simple examples. So this one is kind of cool. This is um, you know, a partial differential equation with some forcing in space, u of x. So it's just a 1D partial differential equation, it varies in space and time, and it's being forced in space according to this, uh, this forcing function. And so, so this is kind of the random uh, forcing function, and this is how we're specifying those input locations. And then you, sam you sample a ground truth solution, some solution Q, at these points here in white. So that's the training data for a particular forcing function U. You can train that uh, deep O network, the trunk net and the branch net, using this kind of data. And then you can predict what would be the solution uh, operator that would take me from a different U forcing, a different U of X, to a similar um, solution to this PDE. So now for like a new forcing function U, I can get the solution of my PDE without actually running that big simulation. So that's a really cool uh, idea here. And what you see is that um, you actually get this really nice um, kind of exponential convergence of the testing error, which is what we call strong convergence. And that's a pretty powerful and nice property of an algorithm when it actually, you know, in this kind of log log plot of error versus training, you know, you actually are kind of log uh, 
kind of linear in this log log plot. That's uh, strong or exponential scaling. And it's one of the really powerful features of uh, this, this deep O network explored in this paper. They also looked at things like how much data you need to train this thing, um, and they did some pretty careful analyses comparing it to that fully connected network and looking at a number of ODEs and PDEs. Again, I'll point out this was really only done for relatively simple ODEs and PDEs, so I would definitely encourage you to try this out to download the code, run it on those cases, reproduce those results, and then start adding some you know, more challenging characteristics and seeing where it breaks. You know, I would try this ODE version on something like the Lorentz system, where I think it's gonna have a much, much harder time actually getting that solution operator, because I know that that solution operator is like irrepresentably complex. So it's good to always be thinking, um, you know, this is a very powerful idea. Learning operators from functions to functions is much more intuitive when we're thinking about ODEs and PDEs. And for me, that's one of the main contributions of this paper is thinking about that kind of philosophical change from trying to think of our neural network as just a function approximator to thinking of it as an operator approximator that takes input functions and gives output functions. That's hugely valuable. That's a perspective that we're still learning from and developing on in the community today. But again, um, and it works really well for simple PDEs and ODEs, but I do want you to always be thinking, okay, is this gonna work for my ODE? Is this gonna work for my PDE? Um, so definitely worth playing around with and trying out. And you know, compare it to the fully connected, try you know, different ways of representing your data, and maybe you can come up with a variant um, that you know, also works really well. So things I would be thinking about also are, how do I incorporate physics into this? So how do I, um, how do I incorporate things like energy conservation or mass conservation, if I know something about my operator, if I know it has a symmetry, how would I add those in to this framework? Would I do it with a loss function? Would I add some additional architecture here? Um, those are all really, really important questions and I want you to be thinking about. Can I combine a deep operator network with a pin? That's a really interesting question too. Um, again, I want you to just be thinking about how these work, what kinds of problems they will work for, what kinds they won't work for, and how you would extend them um, you know, to incorporate different types of physics or other uh, related methods. Okay, thank you.